the decline of traditional Roman religion were responsible. Some rationalist thinkers of the modern era attribute the fall to a change from a martial to a more pacifist religion that lessened their number of available soldiers, while Christians such as Augustine of Hippo argue that the sinful nature of Roman society itself was to blame. 141. The Eastern Empire had a different fate. It survived for almost 1,000 years after the fall of its western counterpart and became the most stable Christian realm during the Middle Ages. During the 6th century, Justinian reconquered the Italian peninsula from the Ostrogoths, North Africa from the Vandals, and southern Hispania from the Visigoths. But within a few years of Justinian's death, Byzantine possessions in Italy were greatly adduced by the Lombards who settled in the peninsula. 142. In the east, partially due to the weakening effect of plague of Justinian, the Byzantines were threatened by the rise of Islam. Its followers rapidly brought about the conquest of the Levant, the conquest of Armenia and the conquest of Egypt during the Arab-Byzantine Wars and soon presented a direct threat to Constantinople. 143, 144, in the following century, the Arabs also captured southern Italy and Sicily. 145, on the west, Slavic populations were also able to penetrate deep into the Balkans. The Byzantines, however, managed to stop further Islamic expansion into their lands during the 8th century and beginning in the 9th century, reclaimed parts of the conquered lands. 143, 146, in 1000 AD, the Eastern Empire was at its height. Basil II reconquered Bulgaria and Armenia, and culture and trade flourished. 147, however soon after, this expansion was abruptly stopped in 1071 with the Byzantine defeat in the Battle of Manzikert. The aftermath of this battle sent the empire into a protracted period of decline. Two decades of internal strife and Turkic invasions ultimately led Emperor Alexius I Komnenos to send a call for help to the Western European kingdoms in 1095. 143. The West responded with the Crusades, eventually resulting in the sack of Constantinople by participants of the Fourth Crusade. The conquest of Constantinople in 1204 fragmented what remained of the empire into successor states. The ultimate victor was the Empire of Nicaea. 148. After the recapture of Constantinople by imperial forces, the empire was little more than a Greek state confined to the Aegean coast. The Byzantine Empire collapsed when Mehmed the Conqueror conquered Constantinople on 29 May 1453. 149. Society. The Roman Forum, the political, economic, cultural and religious center of the city during the Republic and later Empire the imperial city of Rome was the largest urban center in the empire, with a population variously estimated from 450,000 to close to 1 million. 150. The public spaces in Rome resounded with such a din of hoofs and clatter of iron chariot wheels that Julius Caesar had once proposed a ban on chariot traffic during the day. Historical estimates show that around 20% of the population under jurisdiction of ancient Rome, 25-40%, depending on their standards used, in Roman Italy, 151, lived in innumerable urban centers, with population of 10,000 and more and several military settlements, a very high rate of urbanization by pre-industrial standards. Most of those centers had a forum temples, and other buildings similar to Rome's. Average life expectancy weighs about 28.152 north. The roots of the legal principles and practices of the ancient Romans may be traced to the law of the Twelve Tables promulgated in 449 BC and to the codification of law issued by order of Emperor Justinian I around 530 AD, see Corpus Juris Civilis. 
Roman law is preserved in Justinian's codes continued in Toph Byzantine Empire, and formed the basis of similar codifications in continental Western Europe. Roman law continued, in a broader sense, to be applied throughout most of Europe until the end of the 17th century. The major divisions of the law of ancient Rome, as contained within the Justinian and Theodosian law codes, consisted of just civile, just gentium, and just natural. The just civile, citizen law, was the body of common laws that applied to Roman citizens. 153. The Praetus Urbani, SG. Praetor Urbanus, were the people who had jurisdiction over cases involving citizens. The just gentium, law of nations, was the body of common laws they applied to foreigners, and their dealings with Roman citizens. 154. The Praetus Peregrini, SG. Praetor Peregrinus were the people who had jurisdiction over cases involving citizens and foreigners. Just naturally encompassed natural law, the body of laws that were considered common to all beings. Class structure. Roman society is largely viewed as hierarchical, with slaves, servi, at the bottom, freedmen, liberty, above them and freeborn citizens, civs, at the top. Free citizens were also divided by class. The broadest and earliest division was between the patricians, who could trace their ancestry to one of the 100 patriarchs at the founding of city, and the plebeians, who could not. This became less important in the later republic, as some plebeian families became wealthy and entered politics, and some patrician families fell economically. Anyone, patrician or plebeian, who could count a consul as his ancestor was a noble, nobilis, a man who was the first of his family to hold the consulship, such as Marius or Cicero, was known as a novice homo, new man, and ennobled his descendants. Patrician ancestry, however, still conferred considerable prestige, and many religious offices remained restricted to patricians. A class division originally based on military service became more important. Membership of these classes was determined periodically by the census, according to property. The wealthiest were the senatorial class, who dominated politics and command of the army. Next came the equestrians, equites, sometimes translated knights, originally those who could afford a war horse, and who formed a powerful mercantile class. Several. The orator. C 100 BC, an Etrusco-Roman bronze statue depicting all meat, Latin, Aulus Metellus, an Etruscan man wearing a Roman toga while engaged in rhetoric. The statue features an inscription in the Etruscan language of further classes, originally based on the military equipment their members called a fort, followed, with the proletor to, citizens who had no property other than their children, at the bottom. Before the reforms of Marius they were ineligible for military service and are often described as being just above freed slaves in wealth and prestige. Voting power in the Republic depended on class. Citizens were enrolled in voting tribes, but the tribes of the richer classes had fewer members than the poor Romans, all the proletor to being enrolled in a single tribe. Voting was done in class order, from top down and stopped as soon as most of the tribes had been reached, so the poorer classes were often unable to cast their votes. Women in ancient Rome shared some basic rights with their male counterparts but were not fully regarded as citizens and were thus not allowed to vote or take part in politics. At the same time the limited rights of women were gradually expanded, due to emancipation, and women reached freedom from pater familias gained property rights and even had more juridical rights than their husbands, but still no voting rights, and were absent from politics. 155. Allied foreign cities were often given the Latin rights, an intermediary level between full citizens and foreigners, peregrini, which gave their citizens rights under Roman law and allowed their leading magistrates to become full Roman citizens. While there were varying degrees of Latin rights, 
the main division was between those come suffragio, with vote, enrolled in a Roman tribe and able to take part in the Comitia Tributa, and sign suffragio, without vote, could not take part in Roman politics. Most of Rome's Italian allies were given full citizenship after the Social War of 9188 BC, and full Roman citizenship was extended to all freeborn men in the Empire by Caracalla in 212, with the exception of the Dedetissii, people who had become subject to Rome through surrender in war, and freed slaves. 120. Education. In the early Republic, there were no public schools. So boys were taught to read and write by their parents, or by educated slaves, called pedagogy, usually of Greek origin. 156, 157, 158. The primary aim of education during this period was to train young men in agriculture, warfare, Roman traditions, and public affairs. 156. Young boys learned much about civic life by accompanying their fathers to religious and political functions, including the Senate for the Sons of Nobles. 157. The Sons of Nobles were apprenticed to a prominent political figure at the age of 16, and campaigned with the army from the age of 17. This system was still in use among some noble families into the imperial era. 157. Educational practices were modified after the conquest of the Hellenistic kingdoms in 3rd century BC and the resulting Greek influence, although Roman educational practices were still much different from Greek ones. 157, 159, if their parents could afford it, boys and some girls at the age of seven were sent to a private school outside the home called Aludus, where a teacher called a literator or a magister nudi, and orphan of Greek origin, taught them basic reading, writing, arithmetic, and sometimes Greek, until the age of 11. 157, 158, 160, beginning at age 12, students went to secondary schools, where the teacher, now called a grammaticus, taught them about Greek and Roman literature. 157, 160, at the age of 16, some students went on to rhetoric school, where the teacher, usually Greek, was called a writer. 157, 160, education at this level prepared students for level careers, and required that the students memorize the laws of Rome. 157, Pupils went to school every day except religious festivals and market days. There were also summer holidays. Government. Initially, Rome was ruled by kings, who were elected from each of Rome's major tribes in turn. 161. The exact nature of the king's power is uncertain. He may have held near absolute power or may also have merely been the key F executive of the Senate and the people. At least in military matters, the king's authority, Imperium, was likely absolute. He was also the head of the state religion. In addition to the authority of the king, there were three administrative assemblies, the Senate, which acted as an advisory body for the king, the Commission Curator which could endorse and ratify laws suggested by the king, and the Comitia Collator, which was an assembly of priestly college that could assemble the people to bear witness to certain acts, hear proclamations, and declare a feast and holiday schedule for the next month. Representation of a sitting of the Roman Senate, Cicero attacks. Catalina, from a 19th century fresco the class struggles of the Roman Republic resulted in an unusual mixture of democracy and oligarchy. The word republic comes from Latin res publica, which literally translates to public business. Roman laws traditionally could only be passed by a vote of the popular assembly, commissia tributa. Likewise, candidates for public positions had to run for election by the people. However, the Roman Senate represented an oligarchic institution, 
which acted as an advisory body dot in the Republic. The Senate held actual authority, auctoritas, but no real legislative power. It was technically only an advisory council. However, as the senators were individually very influential, it was difficult to accomplish anything against the collective will of the Senate. New senators were chosen from among the most accomplished patricians by censors, censura, who could also remove a senator from his office if he was found morally corrupt, a charge that could in 